Welcome to another video on the Smith chart. In this one, we are looking at a relatively simple question. It gives us a 70 ohm lossless line. It gives us an S circle of 1.6. It tells us that uh, theta gamma is 300 degrees, and it says if the line is 0 0.6 lambda long, obtain gamma, so the entire expression for gamma, the load impedance, the input impedance, as well as the distance of the first minimum voltage from the load. Okay, so we go ahead and we start this problem. This one's a little simpler than most because usually we have our uh, ZL value and we have to plot that and then draw a circle through that. Here it's already given us the radius of what S is, and so we can draw S and we can just I will draw a circle through there. So I've gone ahead and done that here. So it gives us that S is actually 1.6. So what I do is I intersect the circle at 1.6 on the real axis. And so I guess we can actually write S here. And let's go ahead and do that in red, just to keep it consistent with everything else we've been doing. So this point here is S. Uh, and now it gives us a couple of other things. So it gives us that, uh, well, we have the 70 ohm characteristic impedance, that's fine. It gives us the length of the line. But the most important parameter that here is this uh, theta gamma, because this tells us exactly where the load is. Because theta gamma is defined as the angle corresponding to the reflection coefficient for the load. So it says 200 degrees. So we usually measure, uh, as we do in any other court, um, you know, plot, so we start from zero on the right side here. So if I go across, I have 180 degrees. Now I need to travel another 120 degrees. Traveling 120 degrees from this side is the equivalent of traveling 60 degrees from the right side. So if I go to the negative 60 uh, mark, I will have gone 300 degrees. Negative 60 mark looks like it's right about there. So now this entire thing here, uh, starting from here and then going till there, is theta gamma. Uh, okay, so now we have that this intersection here is actually where our load is, which is quite convenient. So we have ZL normalized is this thing. If you actually find that value and look at what it is quite carefully, you will find that it is approximately equal to, uh, so let's say part A is equal to, ZL normalized is going to be 1.15 um, minus J, well, it's about 0 0.48. It's a little less than 0 0.5 if you look at it. I mean, the red dot is a little thick, so it's hard to see. But when you actually draw it out with a pencil or with a thinner um, uh, tip, you'll see that it's actually a little less than 0 0.5. So now if I go ahead and multiply this thing by my characteristic impedance, which is 70, I'll get 1.5 minus J 0 0.48. And so ZL is just going to be 80.5 minus J 33.6. Uh, well, one thing we forgot to get was gamma. Now how do we find gamma? We need to find magnitude of gamma, and we need to find the angle of gamma. The angle of gamma we already have. The magnitude of gamma, now how do we find that? We take this line here, this distance here, so the, the radius of this circle. Measure that in terms of centimeters, or whatever it is on your ruler, uh, and now lay that line down on this scale here, starting from the center. If you do that, you will find that the magnitude of gamma is actually about 0 0.23 based on that scale at the bottom, the angle of gamma we're already given. So we can say that this is going to be 0 0.23 angle 300 degrees. Okay, and the next thing to find is Zn. How do we find Zn? So it gives us the length of the line, which is quite convenient. Uh, so we can start at Z in, go towards the load uh, by this length, which is 0 0.6 lambda here. So doing that, what happens is first 0 0.5 lambda towards the generator. We'll start from ZL and we will travel clockwise along this circle and we will end up back at this point at 0 0.5 lambda. Now we need to go another 0 0.1 lambda towards the load. So that's further clockwise this way. So we expect that it'll be somewhere in this area here. So to find the exact point, we first we do our one rotation. Imagine we've gone our rotation and we'll end up at this point here. 
So now from this point, we need to go another 0.1 lambda. So I see here that this is using the outer scale, that this point here is about 0 0.33, uh, well, yeah, 333, three, I guess, really is what it looks like there, because it's slightly between the 2 and the 4 mark. And so that means I want to go to 0 0.433. And that point, if I will mark it here, uh, will actually occur where I have this red dot here. Well, it'll actually be a little less than that red dot. So it'll actually be, if that's 2, this point here will be 3. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to drop a line uh, between the origin and this point. And now where that point intersects on our S circle is Z in. So that's our input impedance. Now if you read that value off, um, again, it's a little thick here, so I mean I've done it separately on a piece of paper, you'll find that Z in is actually equal to 0 0.68, because it's a little less than 0 0.7, and minus J 0 0.25. It turns out it's like right in the middle of, the, of two circles at that point, so I've approximated that and called it 0 0.25. Five. Now, to find Z in actual, we take 70 and we multiply by 0 0.68 minus J 0 0.25. And so if we do that, we find that we actually end up with 47.6 minus J 17.5 uh, ohms, of course. Don't forget units. Same applies to this one here. Reflection for coefficient is dimensionless, so we don't need to worry about units there. So that's part A. We have done. It says find gamma, ZL, and ZN. Okay, moving on to the next point. It says the distance of the first minimum voltage from the load. So if you recall, this point here is actually V max, always. And this point here is going to be V min always. So we want to find the distance from ZL uh, to V min, keeping in mind that we're traveling towards the generator and not towards the load, because at ZL we are at the load, and we can't go any further towards the load if we're already at the load. So what they want us to find pretty much is the distance between this 0 0.33 lambda and this point here. Um, and if we do that, we will have done the question. Um, essentially, well, we could count in terms of what we want to do there. But if you look at this scale along the outside, it's increasing. So it goes 0 0.34, 0 0.35, 0 0.36, and so on, all the way up to 0 here. Now, at this 0 point, it's actually uh, 0 0.5 lambda, because the one before you look at 0 0.49 but every 0 0.5 we said, it, it, the cycle repeats. So what I can actually do is I can call this point 0 0.5 lambda. And to find this distance to the minimum voltage there, all I need to do is find this distance. So I take 0 0.5 minus 0 0.33, and that's going to be my distance to V min. So I want to find D V min. We'll call it dv min 1, because it's asking for the first one. So I take 0 0.5 minus 0 0.333. Three, uh, well, the whole thing is in terms of lambda, so I'm putting the lambda outside. And if we do that, we find that this thing is actually equal to 0 0.167 lambda. Okay, I just want to point out, because I mean, there's there's sometimes confusion about, you know, which scale to use, which one we want to use, when we want to use, which one. It doesn't really matter. You can use whichever one you want. If you look at the inside scale, you'll notice that it's actually increasing this way. Okay, so if you look at this one, 0 0.04, 0 0.05, 0 0.06, 7, 8, so on. So what we could have done is we could have just, probably the simpler way to do it, was to just look at this inner scale and read this number off directly. If you look at that, that's about 0 0.6, uh, 0 0.1, sorry, it's about 0 0.16, that's 2, 4, 6, and it's between 6 and 8, so it's exactly 0 0.167 if you look at that number right there. 
So in on the inner scale that is. So if we, I'll, I'll just zoom in on this a bit, just so just to you know point out. Um, if you look at this little segment right here, this point is actually intersecting at 0 0.167. We've just gone the other way and subtracted that way. Uh, whichever way is simpler um, for you, I guess, is probably the best way to actually solve these problems. But you, you can see there's no one way to solve them. It's, it's a matter of which one is you know makes the most sense to you. Uh, so we've gone ahead and we've solved that. I mean, this is approximately, I guess you can call lambda over 6, which really has no significance other than you can represent it as a simple fraction. So I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next one.